As Africa's leading defense news portal, Defense Web aims to give you the latest updates on African defense, the South African National Defense Force, and the defense industry. In this week's edition on the continent, Ghana parades Cobra armored vehicles, the Nigeria Navy records a substantial number of recent acquisitions, a Southern African Development Community technical team is heading to Mozambique, we give an overview of foreign security involvement in Mozambique, rural crime continues as an agriculture body calls for the police minister's dismissal, and UAVs give police an edge in border livestock theft operations. In SANDF news, soldiers recover goats and seize narcotics on the Lesotho border, and 14 are charged in connection with the 2019 tech-based weapons theft. In industry news, Denal Vehicle Systems is at a standstill. And in African Defense News, Ghana Parades Cobra Armored Vehicles The Ghana Armed Forces have officially unveiled new Cobra Armored Personnel Carriers acquired from Turkey's Okotar. 40 of the vehicles were displayed by President Nana Akufo Ado on the 31st of March during a parade in the capital Akara. On the 5th of December 2019 at Burma Camp, the President presented 33 Armored Personnel Carriers Cobra 1 and 2s, 41 assorted Toyota vehicles, 3 water tankers, 1 self-loading recovery truck, 1 refrigeration van, and 5 utility vehicles for waste disposal and management. Nigeria Navy records substantial number of recent acquisitions. The Nigeria Navy has made significant progress in the recapitalization of its fleet, with dozens of vessels commissioned in 2020 and more on the way. France's Oshia recently shipped the third and fourth Sea Falcon interceptors to Nigeria via a cargo ship. The first two were delivered at the end of 2020. Over the last eight years, Oshia has supplied one FPB-98 Mark I patrol vessel, eight FPB-72 Mark II, and two FPB-110 Mark II patrol vessels to Nigeria. Oshia also won three tenders for two additional FPB-110, one OSV-190 SCWB, and four Sea Falcon vessels. The two additional 35-meter FPB-110 boats were delivered by the end of 2020. In September last year, Oshia launched a new hydrographic survey vessel, Belana, which is expected to be delivered by April 2021. The Nigerian Navy is also expecting four 17-meter Suncraft Manta boats from Malaysia, while Damon is set to deliver two 40-meter FOSS patrol boats. The Damon boats are being built at its facilities in Vietnam. On the smaller end of the scale, Suncraft has supplied 25 of its 9.5-meter long and 15 of its 8.5-meter rigid-held inflatable boats. Another 90 small boats are either expected or have been delivered to the Nigerian Navy. Acquisitions include locally manufactured vessels, indigenous construction of a third 43-meter seaward defense boat, and two logistics supply vessels slash houseboats at the Naval Dock Yard Limited and Naval Shipyard Limited, respectively, are progressing steadily. These vessels were expected to join the service in the first quarter of 2021. In addition, about 170 riverine patrol boats were built in Nigeria, and more acquisitions are planned. On the aerial side, the Nigerian Navy has taken delivery of a single AW139 helicopter from Leonardo Helicopters and is in the process of procuring 14 unmanned aerial vehicles to enhance response capability through South Africa's Epsilon and CACTRC in China. These are expected to be delivered within the current year. Over the last six years, the Nigerian Navy has acquired a total of 378 platforms, including 172 patrol boats, 114 rigid hull inflatables, two seaward defense boats, 12 Manta class boats, three whaler boats, three tugs, and two barges. Other platforms acquired include 22 fast attack boats, 14 UAVs, four helicopters, 14 river town class boats, 12 houseboats, and four capital ships. SADAC technical team heading to Mozambique. The major outcome of how level Southern African Development Community SADAC meetings on the increasingly volatile situation in northern Mozambique is an immediate deployment of a regional block technical mission. Termed an organ in an official communique released after last week's meeting in Maputo, the mission will reportedly assess how Mozambique's neighbors can assist in helping the country to counter the Islamist insurgency in Capo Delgado province. There is no mention of the makeup or size of the technical deployment and the sole indication of the time frame appears to be an extraordinary meeting of the organ's ministerial committee on the 28th of April. According to the communique, the double Triorco summit in Maputo noted with concern acts of terrorism perpetrated against innocent civilians, women and children in some districts of Capo Delgado province of Mozambique condemned the terrorist attacks in the strongest terms and affirmed that such heinous attacks cannot be allowed to continue without a proportionate regional response. The regional bloc expressed full solidarity with the government and people of Mozambique and reaffirmed SADAC's continued commitment to contribute to efforts to bring about lasting peace and security as well as reconciliation 
creation and development in the country, an overview of foreign security involvement in Mozambique. A number of private security companies, foreign governments and militaries have become involved in Mozambique in its fight against the insurgency in Capo Delgado. Russian security company Wagner Group, which has close ties to Moscow, was hired by the Mozambican government to address the insurgency in Capo Delgado alongside government forces, but the group struggled to make progress. The estimated 200 Wagner personnel left Mozambique in November 2019 after suffering heavy casualties. Reporting suggests that the group were unable to operate in northern Mozambique's bush environment and their relationship with the Mozambican armed forces broke down after botched operations and a friendly fire incident. They were since replaced by the Dyke Advisory Group, DAG, a private military company providing aerial support to Mozambique's armed forces. DAG's three-month contract with the Mozambican police was extended in July 2020 and was reported to have ended on the 6th of April 2021. The most recent contract expanded their operation, which began on a shoestring of 30 men to provide training and aerial support. The company is led by ex-Rhodesian Colonel Lionel Dyke and registered in South Africa. The company has been accused by Friends of the Earth of causing civilian casualties during the battle to retake Makomia from insurgents. The report by Friends of Earth also stated that the helicopters used were French licensed. Paramount was hired by the Mozambican government to strengthen the capacity of the security services. The company delivered at least five Marauder armored vehicles to Capo Logado and has provided military helicopters and pilot training. Total may have contracts with several security companies to protect its multi-million dollar oil and gas projects in Mozambique. One of these is Arke, a local subsidiary of South African company Omega, which is domiciled in Mauritius. Arke also provides security across Mozambique to embassies and was employed at the Gemfields Mine at the time when serious allegations were made about human rights abuses against civilians there. Total has repeatedly stated that its security contractors are unarmed. G4S is the biggest employer in Mozambique outside the public sector, according to the company's website. Mal Brooks is the regional CEO. He's been with G4S since 2012 and previously worked for defense contractor Quinetti Q. There is little information available about their operations in Capital Delgado. Garda World are a Canadian company, majority owned by private equity company BC Partners. Their operations in Mozambique are run by Michael Gibson, who is ex-British military and has previously spent six years in Angola running projects for Aegis Defense Services. So far, Mozambique's president, Nyusi, has limited his request to foreign assistance to logistical support and training. The United States has stated that it is engaged in patrolling around Capo Delgado, linking the insurgency to transnational drug trafficking. From mid-March 2021, U.S. Special Operations Forces began a two-month-long training program for Mozambican Marines. The Joint Combined Exchange Training Program, launched on the 15th of March, will see Mozambican Marines benefit from the experience and knowledge of the U.S. Special Forces to up their skill levels in support of efforts by South Africa's eastern neighbor to prevent the spread of terrorism and violence extremism, the U.S. Embassy said. The European Union confirmed in October 2020 that they would support Mozambique to re-establish security at Capo Delgado. The EU will provide training, logistics, and medical services to support the Mozambique military, but the EU ambassador to the country, Antonio Sanchez Benedito Gaspar, said explicitly that bringing in EU forces was not on the agenda. The move to offer support was pushed by Portugal. In March, Portugal announced it would send 60 soldiers to Mozambique. Portugal has in the past provided security assistance, including equipment such as FTB-337 aircraft to Mozambique. South Africa has repeatedly offered assistance to Mozambique, but its involvement has so far largely been limited to repatriating South Africans from Palma and conducting anti-piracy patrols in the Mozambique Channel. Rural crime continues as agriculture body calls for police minister's dismissal. Increasing incidents of rural crime, ranging from murder and assault through to livestock and other property theft, have long been a concern for representative agricultural organizations and certain political parties. One of these organizations, the Transvaal Agricultural Union, feels the lack of action and reaction by police to rural crime is not working and launched an electronic campaign to eject Police Minister Becky Sele from office. The campaign comes at the same time as the Democratic Alliance and KZN reports another farm attack in the province. The attack at Bishop's Store outside Peter Maritzburg saw a farmer respond reportedly shooting and killing one of two suspects who assaulted him and his wife. UAVs give police an edge in border livestock theft operations. Landlock Lesotho provides South African defense and law enforcement agencies tasked with border protection, ongoing problems of which livestock theft is one. This was confirmed in response to a question asked of Police Minister Becky Sele by a National Council of Provinces representative. The ministerial reply also illustrated the extent of cooperation between the SA Police Service and the SA National Defense Force. In his written reply to Northwest Freedom Front Plus representative Stefan de Toit, Sele agreed with the stock theft hotspot label currently given to the border between South Africa and the mountainous Lesotho Kingdom. The ministerial response reads in part, the Fixburg policing precinct was identified as a hotspot police station in terms of stock theft and measures have been put in place to address
address this matter. Detroit's also asked CLA if drone technology was in use to assist police in identifying and apprehending suspects. He was informed the police have undertaken initial engagements with the SA Civil Aviation Authority to confirm the regulatory process for law enforcement to use drones. Police are, according to CLA, cooperating with the private sector and effectively using drone technology on a regular basis in operations along the Free State slash Lubtutu border. The joint initiative has been successful in recovering stolen stock and affecting arrests in mountainous areas. And in SNDF news, soldiers recover goats and seize narcotics on Lesotho border. Another indication of the ease with which contraband and stolen goods move into South Africa comes from the Eastern Cape, where soldiers deployed to protect borders recently recovered and confiscated an estimated 124,000 rand plus worth of drugs and livestock. Soldiers from Makanda headquartered 6th SA Infantry Battalion are currently based at Maluti, adjacent to the KwaZulu-Natal slash Lesotho border. In addition to regular foot and vehicle mounted patrols at the borderline, soldiers also set up vehicle stop and search operations at strategic points. One of these led them to 22 Angora goats apparently abandoned in Klakudwana village. The goats are estimated to be worth 39,600 rand. In another mission, soldiers from the SA Army Specialized Airborne Infantry Battalion worked with police to locate and recover stolen goats. The search ended at Seslabeni Cliff, where the animals were apparently hidden from view behind a mountain. 29 goats, valued at 34,800 rand, were recovered. Another six SAR patrol working the new rest area close to the Lesotho border entered a house in search of contraband. Their efforts were rewarded when Mandrax, crystal meth, and marijuana, valued at 50,000 rand, was found in one. The military did not indicate if the narcotics were smuggled into South Africa or if any suspects were apprehended and handed to police. 14 charged in connection with 2019 tech base weapons theft. Military justice, in common with its civilian counterpart, is not generally known for speed, as evidenced in the theft of weapons from a South African National Defense Force base in Centurion. The theft was uncovered in December 2019, thanks to information supplied by Democratic Alliance Shadow Defense and Military Veterans Minister Corbis Moray. Nine months later, he told Defense Web the initial urgency around the case was no longer there and he would be asking questions of Defense and Military Veterans Minister Nosibiru Mapisangakula. Last week, he shared the ministerial response to his questions on the issue with Defense Web. Mapisangakula informed Moray's charges have been brought against 14 SANDF personnel. They will, on an as yet unnamed date, appear in the court of a senior military judge trial on charges of housebreaking and theft and alternative charge of negligent loss of firearms. All 18 R4 assault rifles stolen from tech base have, according to Mapi Sangakula, been recovered. Two of three 9mm pistols stolen were also recovered and details of the still missing third were circulated. The weapons were traced to and found in Kwathema Springs and Benoni Township, Davyton in eastern Gauteng. And in industry news, Denal vehicle system at a standstill. Another depressing view of the depths state-owned defense conglomerate Denal has sunk to comes from a Democratic Alliance parliamentarian following an oversight visit to Ekululani-based Denal Vehicle Systems, DVS. Michelle Clark, the party's shadow deputy public enterprises minister, will urgently engage Praveen Gordhan, President Saul Ramaphosa's cabinet minister responsible for state-owned enterprises, after visiting DVS in Benoni. She is the second opposition parliamentarian to take up Denal issues with Minister Gordhan in less than a month. Benedicta van Minen, a member of parliament's standing committee on public accounts, is still waiting for him to answer her allegations of reckless trading at Denal. The company DVS is reduced to empty factories and has lost a highly competent and skilled workforce, Clark said in a statement after visiting the company once responsible for upgrading the Olifant main battle tank. Three divisions, OMC, Gear Ratio and Mechatronics, responsible for armored vehicles, turrets and fire control systems and driveline systems, once boasted around 1,200 highly skilled staff. The staff complement is currently 200 people being paid at 50% of their salaries. The plants, which manufactured highly sophisticated combat vehicles, including RG-31s, RG-32s and RG-41s, are at a standstill. No vehicles are being manufactured due to Denel's financial woes. The building and plant represents a ghost town, according to her statement. Looking forward, Clark reported there are tenders going out, adding a contract to manufacture vehicles for the UAE has not started and we found the procurement process so complex it is impossible to ensure purchases are done in order to continue with business. DVS do not have capital to finance tenders and contracts in the pipeline. It does not possess capital to sustain itself. If a partnership is not bought on board as soon as possible, I anticipate the company will not be able to operate beyond May 2021, she said. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, our daily and weekly newsletter, and our other social media platforms if you enjoyed the webcast. Leave your comments below. Thank you for listening. Stay safe, and we'll see you next week.